the fat in a chicken uh -huh. is a gift from God. Okay, great. You don't pull it off, you don't okay. get rid of it, you okay. use that fat, okay. always. Okay. Because it's gonna come off in the cooking process. Uh -huh. It's similar to what's called visceral fat, uh -huh. which is the inside organ fat that like in most mammals, that you know, that protects the organs. Yeah. It's, the, it's a very similar, so it's got a lower melting point, okay. which makes it, um, kind of cook right off, okay. um, but also keeps everything moist and super flavorful. And you're going to find most of that fat right here. Right in the, the notches here okay. is where the most of it is, is held. And so it usually mm -hmm. can just pull right off. You can render it down and use it for further cooking to make things taste more intensely chickeny. You know, if you okay. want it to have more flavor, cook with it. You know, if you want to render it out, render it out. Um, the rest of the fat is kind of found basically throughout the skin area and attached to, to the muscles very loosely. And you mm -hmm. can see it right here. Again, that's all just gonna melt right off in the cooking process mm -hmm. and just continue to keep things beautiful. So there's, you never, ever, ever want to, to do that to unless you get, get rid of it because fat is your friend, especially with something so lean as a chicken. Okay. All right. Ready. Now, things that we don't need, wingtips. These little guys right here, yeah. never, ever, ever need those. They're, they're, they're useless except for for stock. Okay. That's really the only thing you use them Why for. Why is that? Because there's no meat on them. It's okay. all cartilage okay. and gotcha. skin. Gotcha. Uh, so the wingtips right here, they're attached to the flats here, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then the drumettes, okay. which are basically make up the whole, um, the whole wing itself. Oh, okay. Then you have here, you have the drumsticks. Mm -hmm and then the thighs, yep. and then the breast. Gotcha. After that, that's like the usable portion. Uh -huh. After that, you just have the spine. Okay. And which, or the, in the ribs, which kind of makes up what's called the cage. Uh -huh. And so, I always make sure that my chickens are very, very dry before I work with them in any way, shape, or form. Why and that, that is to keep it from slipping, um, uh, from getting contamination yeah. sure. in other places, all that good stuff. That makes sense. So drier the better, and that goes with all your proteins, but especially with chicken. Never ever rinse your chicken. Mm -hmm. Never rinse it, okay? Because all it does is just spread contamination into your sink when it's unnecessary. Gotcha. Um, so if your chicken is, you know, if you're worried about it, if you're, if it's uh, maybe slightly off pudding or something, but it's cusping maybe, mm -hmm. uh, just give it a bath and some salt, some lemon, you know, and, oh, okay. and then and then dry it thoroughly, mm. and then it should be good to go. Okay. 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 So again, visceral fat, that's our friend. We can start that in a pan, we can render that out. We can use that as cooking uh, oil instead of using uh, an oil. Okay. So first things first, when I'm breaking down a chicken mm -hmm. from start to finish, I always come through, and you have to think valleys. Always think valleys. So where it comes down in meats is a joint. Gotcha. So that anytime you have a joint, mm -hmm. that's where the knife is gonna go. You gotta yeah. put it there because it would be million times more impossible to put it through the actual bone itself. So why right. do that to yourself? So you it's a logic-based situation. Exactly, exactly, because this is as old as time, right? So you find yeah. where it is, use the mechanics of the bird before, you know, try it out, uh -huh. find that valley, stick the knife in, and take the wingtips right off. Gotcha. The wingtips always come off. They are not, again, they are nothing but a flavor enhancer for a stock or a court bouillon okay. or, or something of the nature, something where you're just trying to flavor liquid. Um, now, again, you've heard the term as many ways to skin a cat. Sure. Uh, especially coming up on Halloween, right? You know, it's, it's extra extra cool to say, I think. That's right. It is September already. All right. It's flying by. Sure. Uh, so you have, um, so there's, there's, there's many, many, many ways. Mm -hmm. We could mm -hmm. spatchcock it, which means take uh -huh. off the spine, spread it open, take out the keel bone or the breast bone. Oh. Uh, and, maybe, and then I usually leave the ribs on. Sometimes I take them off. Uh -huh. It depends on the mood. Uh, but they help protect the meat from drying out. Um, and so, and then basically what you do is you take this spine by cutting right through here. You would, you would, uh, if you can watch, you can just boom. If you saw that movement with oh, the thumb, watch yeah. the other one, here we go. And boom, uh -huh. that's dislocating the hip. Oh. So you dislocate the hip. Now you can use scissors or a sharp knife and you cut basically right, right through here and you just remove this whole spine. Once that's done, you have access to the keel bone, which is oh. basically the thickest part of the bone in the chicken and you, you just simply just rip that right out oh, okay. and then you could lay your uh, poultry of any kind flat and then grill it or it'll cook exponentially faster um, which means that your thighs and your breast will cook at the same time now so you don't have to worry about that 
It's like uh, pretty popular, right? People do that a lot. Yes, yeah. especially in the summer. Yeah. Uh, and I'm trying to get more people to do it during Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, because it's like, it's so much faster. Yeah. Uh, and it's more even and you can get more flavor because like if you just roast it on a bed of something, yeah. then you can get all that flavor and it's like more contact with mm -hmm. the bird. So more flavor is coming up into it. Cool. Um, that makes sense. Never stuff a bird. Okay, you always want to leave the cavity open if you're mm -hmm. roasting it whole. Um, truss your chicken if you're roasting it whole, which means to tie it up very nicely and to basically it's to, going to bring these legs together just like this in, you know, with the string and then push the, the legs into uh -huh. the breast, creating a more compact um, bird, which will allow it to cook more evenly. Because cooking evenly gives you basically more control when mm -hmm. things cook more evenly. And when you have more control, it's less stress. And you know, it's a beautiful thing to go that way. That's true. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm going to take off the wings first. Okay. I like to do it this way just because if you pull it, if you pull these wings nice and tight, you can uh -huh. see how the skin in the armpit right there, it's nice and taut, right? It's nice and strong right there. So that's an indicator that I can put my knife right there. It's a visual cue. Uh -huh. And then, and the, then what that's gonna happen is the bone's gonna stop me. And now this is a ball and socket joint. Sure. So the bone stopped me, so now I can open it up, and if you look, you can see where the ball and socket go, mm -hmm. right in there. Which means that all I need to do is put my knife in, cut it down, and then I'm gonna cut away from the breast. Uh. The breast is the money piece on, mm -hmm. the, on most chicken. The wings are often a side thought, you know, or mm -hmm. an afterthought. So I'll put that wing over there, I'll flip the bird over. Again, a nice taut area right there. Put the knife down. The knife stops on the bone. I can open it up, find where the socket is, Dangerous. and then cut away from the breast. And you have like different bowls for whatever your Just to separate sections keep it. are. Yeah, yeah keep like it all this is of, for like stock or whatever. But yes, that's this for, will be for okay. bones, this will be for wings and breast and Oh, okay, and gotcha. So on, just to keep a, a logic to it. Now, right here in the thigh area. You can mm -hmm. see where the chicken breasts are and you can see the thighs. Yep. They are not attached by any muscles. Uh -huh. So what you do is you find this loose skin right here that's on both sides of the thigh. Yep. You just make a simple incision. See how small that is? Yes. So now we can just go in, open it up. We find where we popped it earlier. Mm -hmm. There's the thigh. Now we can see the meat of the thigh here mm -hmm. and it goes all the way through and we can feel it next to the bone back here. Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're going to simply just use our knife to cut that thigh right off from the bone. But you want to be careful because there's a little bit of meat right in here, often called the oyster. You want to make sure you get that little bit of meat right there. Gotcha. Then, straight down. And there's the oyster right there. Oh. Okay, it's an extra little bit, it's nice. Another incision on the other side, open it up. Find where we popped our thigh, which is right there. Again, straight down. And you can feel the cartilage on this side. So yeah. basically you're just staying where the cartilage and the soft meat of the animal is. Yeah. So now these are off to the side. I'm gonna set my chicken over here and I'm gonna look at my legs. Okay. Again, there's some excess fat here in, in skin sometimes. This yeah. you can just trim off, save it, save add it for that pile there. Okay. Um, it's not like you need to, but you know, it's take, here. It's here. If yeah. you want to take it off, take it off. I like to keep as much skin on at all times because skin equates flavor, which mm. equates crispiness, which is beauty. So let's take a look at our legs. Okay. If you flip them over. And so we're always looking for visual cues, visual cues sure. that teach us where thing, where to put the knife. Okay. So if you can see, do you see how there's, uh, it's bitonal. Yes. It's like a little bit pinker here and a little bit whiter here. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just picture kind of the perfect round, you know, cartoon drumstick. Mm -hmm. um, the, end, the, the apex of that drumstick is gonna be right there. It's gonna end up right where those two meet, uh. where the bitonal meet, which means that if you feel there with your finger, you can feel that that's where the joint is. Gotcha. So you just bring your knife in, you cut it right down, yeah. and it's a simple, easy, right through, again, right through the valley. So uh. now we have our thighs yep. and we have our legs. Beautiful. One fun thing to do with the legs <laughs> is to take them, bring the knife all the way around, both sides, separating all the tendons in the leg. Make sure you go through with your fingers to make sure that they're separated. And then what's going to happen now is this 
and you can get rid of this with a knife if you want to um, by slowly just kind of chopping away at it um, or you can just remove some of it but what's going to happen is during the cooking process uh, this is going to shrink all the way down mm -hmm. and create a little chicken lollipop mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can fry that and we have a little place to hold it while we eat it. Ah. So, you know, we're, it's a little bit more polite so of a civilized. way. Yeah and, yeah, and for some reason, bones equal elegance. And, sure. you know, and we, you know, <laughs> and that's lost on me even as a butcher. <laughs> um, something simple for it. So you have your regular bone in skin on thigh. If you mm -hmm. wanted to, simply enough, just remove the skin from the thigh by tearing it off with your hand. Save that, render it out, it's full of flavor, it's full of fat, and then it, you can eat these like little chips afterwards and they're delicious, especially if you're on keto. <laughs> Flipping it over, we notice that the bone joint, the ball joint is here, and then the other joint is here. And so it goes from here to here in one straight cut. So simply, all I'm gonna do is make a little cut right next to the bone. I'm gonna use my fingers wow. to kind of open it up and kind of just pull the meat away from the bone just a little bit. Get it as far away as possible. Pull it, now the bone's removed. I have a little bit of cartilage left up here. Cut that off, cartilage goes into the bone pile. Bone goes into the bone pile, cartilage pile. Now I have boneless, skinless chicken thighs, just like you see in the grocery store. Perfect. But now the price per pound on that is much, much cheaper. That is accurate. And then uh, what kind of knife do you use? I'm using a simple boning knife. Uh, so it's just a, it's a Western style boning knife that has a little, and this is actually sharp here. Mm -hmm. So that way when oh. you're cooking down, it's rounded to match the bones. Oh, very cool. So when you scrape, you can get all the meat off. So again, chicken lollipops, wonderful. Chicken on the grill, beautiful. Uh, braise it. Uh, the, this is a dark meat, right? Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. this meat is from the legs, which mm -hmm. is a working muscle, mm -hmm. which means there's more blood flow to this, which is one of the reasons why they don't fly, right? Is, right. And so there's not as much um, blood into the breast because, uh, and, and that's because they don't fly. So their working muscles are always going to be tougher to eat, mm -hmm. which means they usually need a little bit more of a, of a slow, low and slow, or they help, but not necessarily. They actually hold up better to a low and slow. Okay. Whereas if you were to braise a chicken breast, mm -hmm. it would disintegrate and become dry very quickly. So you usually would braise a leg like this. And so these are great for braising. All of this meat is great for braising. It's also great for grilling. It's the most versatile cut on the leg. And any chef would tell you, leg meat over breast meat any day. Okay. Back to the task at hand. So if I, if I wanted to uh, make this a bone in, what I would do is simply just stand it up. Mm -hmm. I'd find this little loose area here and mm -hmm. I would just send my knife all the way down, right straight through and remove the back. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna do that. What I want is, bo is uh, boneless breast mm -hmm. with skin on. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling for the keel bone. That's K-E-E-L. So I'm gonna tell. feel for the keel bone. I'm gonna go over the left of it. And I'm just gonna go straight down. So knowing the anatomy of the bird is, is crucial here. Because you need to know that the keel bone is gonna, it's gonna be like a lamp. It's gonna mm -hmm. start here and then it's gonna jut out like this. So it's mm -hmm. like, a, like a, a, lamp, a lamp, right? So after that, you know that you're gonna cut straight down and so you hit that, mm -hmm. that part where it jets out the belly of it, okay? okay? And then you're gonna follow, I'm gonna follow this wishbone straight down because I left it in. It's a good technique when you're first getting started with butchery, yep. is to, it'll help guide you. So now that I'm coming outwards, I need to angle my knife that way and bring it and stay on the, the ribs until I'm through. But I can also visually see mm -hmm. both sides of this. So I know that if I just stuck my knife in, I would be fine. Gotcha. Okay, bone in, skin on breast. We flip it over and you're like, oh, well, what's this bit? Mm -hmm. This bit is the tenderloin. Hey. Okay, yeah. so whenever you order chicken tenders, there's two per to chicken. Most wow. of the time, it is just breast meat that you're getting. Wow. So there is bone in, skin, or boneless, skin on. Remove it. You have boneless, skinless chicken breast ready for any kind of sandwich or salad. Beautiful. Chicken tenders. What yeah. a pro. Other side, final side. Put straight down. So quick. So quick. 
straight. I imagine you've cut yourself before. Like uh, when you first started, did you? When I first started? I don't know. Sometimes don't know. maybe no. But I, I like think to, I would. I like to <laughs> think that I came no. out the womb just to do That's it. a better image. Let's go with that. Yes. I like it. So, bone wow. skinless, beautiful chicken breast. It's going to save all this gorgeous skin. And this I like to sometimes uh, fry up, uh, get it nice and crispy, and then add some sort of uh, bacon seasoning oh, to yeah. it to make it kind of taste like bacon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then make a chicken skin BLT. Ooh. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We do that here in our chicken butchery classes at CSCA. Nice. And uh, then what's left is this, all right? This mm. is worth its weight in gold, okay. okay? Because this makes you beautiful, beautiful stocks. Ah. Okay? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. You never want to roast the chicken bones, though. You want to put them in raw, just like this, into, into cold water. Okay. Uh, and that will give it, um, it'll extract the most collagen from it, so mm -hmm. it gives you that jelly consistency. And then, so, okay. here we go. And just to reflect on what we've done. Yeah, let's do it. We have our carcass here, our bone bin. Yep. We have our wings, which are traditionally only used as chicken wings. There's really no other nothing thing. else going on like with them besides like you eat a chicken wing, you eat a chicken wing. Yeah. Uh, you have your, um, this one we're going to call our dark meat section, where we have our thighs, boneless, bone in, mm -hmm. uh, skin on, skin off. And then we have one uh, that's been, it's called Frenching, uh -huh. uh, or being Frenched, which means <laughs> allowing the bone to show. And uh -huh. The other one is just as is. Uh, so this one's our most versatile basket, gotcha. followed by basically this is where Classics. we're going to go when we're on a diet or mm -hmm. when we're trying to look good for you know. But summer's uh -huh. over, thank God, we're yeah. going into fall. Forget that. Yep. So now that we're into fall, <laughs> we can get all into this and really reap the benefits. Okay. Yeah.